Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're ready to go. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, meeting is, uh, do we have everyone on here? Yep, they're coming on now. Okay. Good morning, Shauna. Good morning. How's things in your end of the world? Same. Same. I get, can't wait to get to January so life can get back to normal. Okay. Okay, uh, Mr. Chairman, good morning. This is Ms. Birdsong. I do need everyone to, yes, accept as, as a panelist. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Ms. Sepso is here and I'm trying to promote her to panelists as well. Good morning. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, and now you, because when you promoted me, things went to heck in a handbasket. All yeah. right. All right, we have everyone on here? No, not yet. I'm still looking for. Two, three, four, and, and Norris is on five. You said hello, so we got everyone on Okay. Here. Okay. Hi, folks. Thank you. We'll begin today's meeting, um, as I said before, and thank you very much for uh, accommodating um, our uh, schedule. Uh, it is, uh, you know, we had uh, a family situation, and thank you for being accommodating. Uh, the, the second thing is, as I said before, we have, uh, we're only halfway through. This is our, our last meeting scheduled for this because we are now really up against a time frame, especially given that uh, Linda, uh, you know, she's got work to do before she is no longer, you know, available and with us. So this is why today is so critical. August, we typically do not have a meeting. So the I said that we would only deal only with this issue unless there was a very urgent issue before the commission. Is there any urgent issue before the commission that we must address. Hearing none, then we will keep moving forward here. Okay. Um, Brenda, thank you very much for setting this all up here for us here. Uh, I believe we were at what page 80. Well, I have I have mine printed out here. So it was uh, shared requirements of both supervisor and provisional appraiser. That was slide uh, 80. 85. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So we're, what we'll do is we'll go through here. I've made, uh, I probably have a dozen notes through here. Um, the, the former coach at UCLA used to say, be quick, but don't hurry. So we're going to be quick. We're not going to hurry. We're going to take the appropriate time we need for each one. Uh, John, I know you sat in. I only listened to about 40 minutes of the presentation earlier this week that you had, a, you know, you sent out here. There's a section in the later portion. I think we can then give you the floor and we can talk more about that. That would be the most appropriate portion. So I haven't forgotten you. I wanted to make sure you're aware of that. Okay. Yep. All right, then. That being said, we go into the next slide. It said shared requirements for both supervisor and provisional appraiser. The only thing I would say on that slide and then open it up, we say both appraisers have provided input in selecting credentialing pathing, certified residential appraisers qualified to appraise a building containing one to four units and so forth. Then we go, this is the highest level of licensing. We didn't have a line in there 
for the you know the certified general appraiser. This is the highest level of licensing. We need to put that tag in there. Agree? Disagree? I guess everyone's on mute. Yes. Okay. I think so. I would agree. Okay. Great. Okay. So we'll make note of that. I'm sorry. Is Vicky on by chance? And Linda? Yes, I'm here. And Linda's here as well. And Linda's here as well? Yes. Great. Thank you. So feel free to jump in. Okay, so that maybe just got lost in the watch on that one. Jerry, the so only as, thing I, as I understand it, you're just saying add a line about certified general appraiser. Yeah, see, we, we had uh, we had the certified residential and we right. talked about mm -hmm. it. We never put a, a tag and said, this is the highest level of licensing. If we looked at that, that would imply that you can appraise, uh, that a certified residential appraiser could apply all properties. Okay, I have that. Add certified general appraiser. Okay, very good. Yep. Okay, there was someone who wanted to say something. I'm sorry. Yeah, um, I know Linda Sepso, um, we were talking about this last time and, and I, I went looking for it and I couldn't find it, but I, I swear it's supposed to be that uh, where I'm getting it from, that it's one to four family, but not specialized residential. Linda, remember that? Linda here? John, that's more, if you went through that, you'll find that even more defined later in this document. All right. I saw that, but I wasn't sure if we're going to. Okay, gotcha. it, it, it's probably 20 slides down the road here. Okay, where we get into things. And make a note of it, though, to make sure we cover it. Okay, shared requirements for both supervisor and provisional. The next slide here. Anything, anybody have anything to add or subtract? Okay, I didn't either. The next slide. Shared requirements for both supervisor and provisional. Anything to add or subtract? So then we get the next slide Q and A. So I open it up. Any anything to add? What we just went over from the general public or anybody of that section. Staff, anybody? Okay. Then we get into complex properties. John, this is where it may start to tag in. You know what I'm saying? When we, we come into here, what makes a property complex? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Did this, I think something happened to the slide. Oh, for okay. just a moment. Certainly. I apologize, it, it jumped. It happens, it happens. So it should be, look at, I think number 90, look at number nine, slide 90. Okay, then the next one, there, there we go. Sorry about that, thank you. No problem, it happens. Okay, you can see complex properties in Connecticut. John, this is where you were talking about, I believe, or no? Yeah, but on this first slide here, are we focusing on residential here? So shouldn't it be complex residential properties or no? Because we have complex uh, properties general coming down up on slide 95. Well, John, we and go, then, and then on hang, hang on just a second, John. Go to one, two, three slides down the road. No, I see that. I see where we have complex, and the slide on mine is 94. I don't know what we're at now, but I see where we have complex uh, properties general. And then before that, we have complex properties residential. Yeah. Okay. And then the, the two before that we have, uh, mine's number 91, where, where this complex properties I guess what you're saying is we just leave it. Okay, all right, I'm okay with it now. I just had to think it through for a minute because reading it first, I just it looks like we're just focusing on residential. I think with that, with a, that heading, with that heading, like a, like a funnel and starting to work its way down. You know, 
we talk about complex properties on the next slide says property can be atypical based on you know the half a dozen things that are put there uh, that's generally speaking and then we get into the complex resis well i think uh, we should add in that thing too we have um special purpose property types can be complex too i mean you do you you know a hotel can be i mean a hospital can be a special purpose property i just did a transfer station things like that should we add something like that if this well, is the general it, part of it right here we would look where we get into it john it goes complex properties all right i i i'm working off a of printout so i guess it'd be 91 92 93 94 Is that slide 94, which says complex properties, general, RCG. Then we have commercial mixed use, subdivision, industrial. Yeah. Yes, that's slide 94, Chairman. I think we're covering it, but maybe I'm missing the boat here. Well, I mean, uh, uh you know, a small mom and pop retail, you know, a mixed use uh, apartment and retail on the bottom, a general subdivision and industrial. Are those really complex properties for the generally certified uh, real estate appraiser? No, a general real estate appraiser should be able to handle all those property types by the time they get certified. So I think this is where I think this is a little too vague. I think it should be a little bit more specific in terms of saying, you know, a property can be RCG. Certification required to appraise complex commercial property. Property can be, I think we should have down there special purpose property type. We could add another bullet. Is that what you need? Or yeah. what, what that? That's what I need. <laughs> Where do you want that to be? Where do you want that to be? On um, this one that's being shown right now? After the industrial, say special purpose property type. Yeah. Special. Okay. Um, so special purpose. Property type. Yep. Thank you. And then, the, then maybe in the notes we can add that there might be a time if the if the instructor needs to slow down or something that you know to have a discussion on what are some special purpose property types, just to get people thinking. Okay, we jumped a little bit, John, on that. On um, going back. And I'm uh, asking Linda and Shauna specifically and Norris here on the complex properties residential. Is there anything we need to add or subtract in that arena? Hearing none, I guess we're okay. Or is everyone on mute? Yeah. No, I don't see anything. Okay. Feel free to jump in. Good. If there's something you want to add or subtract, you, this is, you know, you I'm, guys are dealing with this more than I. Okay. So then I guess we then, we'd be at slide 95. Complex properties heading factors to, we have the what if. We have, it's kind of a discussion question and factors with other questions to get, you know, participation. I think we're good there. Is there anything to add or subtract? Okay. Then we go, we next one, 96, I guess is Q and A. So we're okay. Any, any comments on that section? from staff, general public, other members of the commission. Okay, hearing none, or you're on mute one last time. All right, then we move to then the appraisal management companies, the AMCs. We go to 98, slide 98. <laughs> Everyone's okay with what we have here or when you did it before, any comments? Hearing none, we go to slide 99. 
Laws for AMC become effective of 2010. National number of AMCs have increased. Should we just shouldn't we just say laws became you know laws are affected? I, I, I don't know. Does it really matter? It doesn't really bother me that it's there. It's just so long ago at this point. Right. I mean, we could probably take it out. Take take out most of that slide. I would just say they um, AMCs need to be approved in Connecticut. Yeah. Need to be registered in Connecticut, and that you know the part about the um, national registry fee. Okay, Linda and, and Shauna, if we go to the next slide, does that cover everything that we that you you started to go through? Must register a state. Yeah. Well, two years. As I can tell, Linda would know better than me. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we can. You know, I think we can combine. Maybe we can combine these slides so it's all just one slide. So, would you suggest getting rid of the content on ninety nine? I did. I did. But... Yeah, I, 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 I think it's one less. I mean, thing. yeah, they've been around long enough. I think everyone knows they're there. I agree. I agree. We could get rid of that one. Yeah. We can get rid of the first two bullets, but and then the third bullet, just make it one thing. But oh, do we add in anywhere about how many registered AMCs there are here? Yeah, I have it at the bottom of the next slide. There's 148. So I have it on this slide here. I have a bullet to add to that with the number okay. that we currently have. So you'll add the bullet, 148? Yeah. Okay. And I think, as I understood it, you're saying take the last bullet effective 2019 um, and move it to number 100, combine it, so to speak. Yeah, combine the slides and eliminate most of it. Okay, very good. Thank you. Good. Now then, I have a, I have in red. Mine are marked up, and mine comes on to 101. The slide. Oh, let me stop. Every so we're good with a combination of 99 and 100, are we not? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not trying to jump ahead too much. 101 slide. Compliance managers must be certified appraisers. Per statute, AMCs must pay the appraiser his or her fee within 45 days of acceptance of the report. And if I'm a, a person in the class and, I, and I'm not teaching, I'm going to say, if they do not, then what? Who, what, where? I'm trying to think of a, a, a student's question. The next, the next little bulletin, if payment is not received, they can file a complaint. With the they DC. do. Yeah. And they have. How, how, and they often, have. You know, okay, how often do you get that, Linda? Um. I probably get not as much now as when it first started and we changed it to 45 days. I was getting a lot. And normally I can just send a quick letter or a phone call and they get paid within a week. Okay. So, you know, I would, you know, a lot of them, they didn't realize the law had changed, even though they were sent notice. So not so much anymore. Okay. Fair enough. I got a question on this. Is that law, that statue, I know it was a change in the statute, is, is, and I, is that statue in our regular statute for licenses? Isn't that a separate thing off by itself? Shouldn't we reference that in the bottom? Vicki, isn't it? They are all part of chapter... Our chapter is 400. 400, 400 thank you, right. my mind went blank. Yeah, it, it right, it's, it's all part of it, it's just section 20-20. Uh, 29. Right. That's what I remember. Can we yeah. just put that in the comments then for the review for the, the teacher in case they have to somebody asks where is that they can just reference it. Okay. That's part of notes. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the link or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or reference. Okay. Yeah. And on this slide, I also think because we I get a lot of phone calls about this. Um a bullet that the AMC can ask you for revisions or corrections, and they may ask you to comment on additional comparables. And because I get people saying, I'm not changing anything, and you know, they have a 
a basic typo and they refuse to change it. I'm like, no, they can ask you to do that. So, you know, they can ask you to comment. There's a process if somebody wants to appeal a, val a value. So they can send comment comparables and you can comment why you didn't use them. Just so, like you would with a lender. Like any you, client. If right. you have an error, you would you would Exactly. Them. Or they yeah. have, you know, if the homeowner or has some other comparables and wants to, you know, appeal the value, there's a process. So they can ask you to go back and look at it. All right. This is getting a little tricky because in theory, the AMC typically should be the client but the yes. intended user is the bank. And I think that's where they're getting right. Well, it comes from the bank. There's a process normally that if the homeowner, I'm unhappy with the value that you did on the appraisal. I go to my bank. The bank goes to the AMC who then forwards that information to the appraiser. So it is still the bank doing it, but the, the AMC is the middleman between you and the bank. So well, they say, we don't, like something you know what about why didn't you use the sale right next door to the house that sold two weeks before you did the appraisal i mean that's a legitimate question for many that, homeowners that, 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 that crosses over to the business side of the fence linda and that is if you're not going to address if you've made an error they're not going to use you anymore right okay that's a, that's more of a business side of the fence if you're going to be that boneheaded consider that one your last assignment probably for that client so maybe we could just put a bullet in here and just uh you know uh underneath appraisal management companies maybe we put something in i'm, I'm just testing here to solve this issue is uh uh <clears throat> identify is the appraisal management uh, company the client and who the intended user is or something around client intended users and just leave it at that If you're doing work for AMCs, you know, you need to identify that is the AMC the client and are there other intended users? Um, could it be a new slide that says, do you know? And then we can have those uh, facts that you had indicated about, you know, the bank can ask the appraiser to reassess uh, who the client is and who the intended user are. Can we just make that a new slide, Linda? And if you're worried might... about, if you're worried about uh, uh, enough room remember we're going to be combining the next the, the previous slides into one so i think we might have enough room to make okay so we can take that place all right 99 100 and 101 okay. one just two slides and add one bullet whatever right. if that solves it great okay. all right new slide 102 got it thank you okay the next one says q a are there any other concerns edits comments under the AMC portion. Okay, hearing none, then we move over to the old, I guess, 103, Appraisal Law Continuing Education. It should say continuing ING, not continue. Okay. Okay, we have Hold on, let me find the right one I have. I have like four versions of this sitting here. So, um, so Vicki and I have worked on this part because of the changes. And the section that talks about new statutes and regs up at the beginning, we thought it would be a good um, idea to move this up so while uh, well, people are still really paying attention and put it because it is a new um, reg, statue, whatever it is, about the changes to the CE. Okay, hang, hang with me for just a second. 103, because I'm off of paper. So that's 104, 105. 106. Did you kind of cover this with 107? Continuing education school and courses in 108 and 109? And we and Linda, we have your name in there. 
Yeah, gonna, we we gonna changed, replace it with. Yeah, we've had we changed it with new examiner's contact information. Okay. So hopefully there will be a new person when this is ready to go to distribute to the schools. Okay. So I'm looking in here in this whole section of continuing education outside of what you want to move what where is it moving a slide or creating a slide it is moving the slides which number all the continuing ad and we're moving going to move them up to the section at the beginning that talks about um, statutes, section three, statutes and regulations. This is where we'll talk about changes to any of the changes. And, you know, this is a... What slide would that be so we can see it on the screen? Um, let me change it. What, what I think what Linda, if I can interject, Mr. Uh, Chairman, I think what Linda is saying is that, I mean, this is the original, right? This is right. what you decided that we would continue the corrective process or the review process, looking right. at the very first edition, because that's the one that everyone is reviewing. But of course, many changes, slides, edits have been done in about three different or four different special meetings. What Linda is saying is that she and Attorney Bullock have decided that this should go to another section of the presentation altogether, right, Linda? Correct. We, okay, we, and yeah, you, you, want, you want to move it. Let me see if I can change the view here for a moment to see which slide you might be talking about. Um, you want to move it to which section now? Three. The, up at the beginning where there was um, changes to statutes and regs. Okay, so Down that, starts, that yeah. starts with um, slide number 29, understanding Connecticut statutes versus yeah. regulations. Yeah, so in this part where we talk about um, any of the changes that have been made to the statutes and regs, um, because there's been such a major change to the CE statute of having to have it in by January 31st, Okay, so let me just go back to notes pages and I'm going to scroll up to 29. Don't you want that in red? I think you should have put that in red this year. Okay. So, you, so it you, has to be done by January. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, we, 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 we have it in like bold and color and yeah, everything. You want that right away because... Right, and that's why we think we should move it up so it's when um, people are still, you know, sort of paying attention. Still okay, paying attention. so you want to move it um, somewhere in this section. Yeah, yeah, um, just a couple. At, at, at yeah. slide 29 and forward, which would be 29, um, 30, 31, 32. Exactly, in there. Okay. Before that, we will move it. All right, so uh, Linda, you lost me. Do you want to move the entire... CE section, yeah. To that portion. Yeah. Okay, fine. I just, I didn't know where you were going. Okay. All right. So that's yeah. sections. Uh, those are slides 103, 108, just for reference for um, you, Mr. Chairman, and everyone. Okay. So we're back at 103. All right. So we go through that. We will, like you say, continue education that Vicki mentioned here. And then we have what we have in 104. So I know all this is going to move, but let's, with our working document, we say 18 hours. We go to 105 to all licenses. We talk about the use of the seven hour versus the 15 hour. 
Right. Then 106, what's a provisional? If they take it after May 1st, 2022, great. Then 107, you have continuing education school and courses, and you have brokers, salesperson, appraisers, search schools and course. I had a question mark. What were we, what are we trying to convey with this slide? This is where a student can look to see if a course is approved. Okay. This is the simplest place to look um, to see that it's approved. Okay. Can we change the heading? We, I, I just added the line, look to see if a course is approved and then the link is below. Um, if you see the link there. So maybe we'll put the link up the top and just have a picture. But yeah, we can change that around. Just say okay. look to see if it's to look to see if a course is approved. Okay. Then bear with me for a second. 108 is when we flip over. And Linda, we're going to change that. Your name comes out. And what we're going to put there? Whoever the new person is. I think it's going to be Linda Kef Robotel. <laughs> yeah, no, it won't be, unfortunately. And in the last and, and you know, in the last version, what we'll do, Linda, is a gift to you. We'll give your cell number. So <laughs> So you'll always be remembered in you know, perpetuity. The sad, the sad thing is half the residential appraisers anyways already have that number, so. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, slide 158, is that being moved to, to continuing ed? That's the one that says it's gotta be three months prior. Oh, good look out, Weston. Yeah, I mean, we will move any of the continuing ed stuff so they're all together. And in the... I, I don't see, maybe I just missed it. What happens if you take a class after January 31st and before May 1st? I'm sure that's gonna be a question. Do we have anything with that? I am still waiting to get clarification from the powers that be and how that's gonna be handled. So, but we will have that and we'll have it either as a slide or in the notes exactly what will happen. Cause I'm sure there will be a lot of questions on that. Yeah, so that's definitely would go with slide 158, wherever that ends up going. Yeah. That will definitely need to be part of that. Exactly. And I know even I, I heard about that during the last law class. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure, you know, I have to check with licensing and see exactly how they're going to handle everything as far as the audit, obviously it will be audited. And then to me, if they, my thoughts are, if it's not completed at January 31st, then it's late. Okay. We'll get to that later here. Okay. The other thing is that um, there's a new, um, what's that called? Uh, email address, Linda, right? Let me make sure we put that on. Oh yeah, we gotta change. Yeah, we, there's a new email address for real estate appraisals. So we'll change. We'll make sure they're all changed. So on that slide uh, 108, that's one we're still focusing on, right? Shouldn't we just take off Linda's name for now, just so we don't accidentally leave it up there? Yeah. Yeah, we have. We have. We put new staff. <laughs> we wrote new staff and highlighted it, so we know to change it. Okay. Then on 109, we gotta go. Did you already change from four hours to three hours? Yeah, in, in we changed all of those. Yeah, we changed all of those. Okay. And, and we changed all the dates. Okay, so then on 110, licenses who are not compliant within the 2020, would that not be 2022? Yeah, we changed that. And we changed the above to from... May 1, 2022 to January 31st, 2024. Okay, we changed all the dates. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. Um, any, and now we get to question that. Any other things? This is a lot of moving. We've cleaned up. We're going to move this. Is there anything else in continuing education? The only thing I would like to see... My, I'm you. The only thing I would like to see is I'm still bugged about that guy who didn't take any education and came in and we only find him that little bit. 
where it says this is reported to the a ASC. Maybe we can we add a comment there that says and your name gets can get can get posted and will be up for you know, anybody can look it up that you had a violation. So to ex expand what non-compliance being posted to the AC means. Yeah. Yeah, I mean we can or I can no. put it in the comments or we can put it there. Reported, it's reported to the ASC and is posted on the National Registry. Yes. Okay, we can do that. For everybody to see. Is it still four hundred dollar penalty? Yeah, we've been over that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for this for this cycle it is. So if for you guys, 22. you know, come in twenty twenty four. If you guys want to change it, which I know you guys do, you need to probably start in twenty twenty three sometime to. Get it approved, Shauna. We got to wait till what we kind of inferred. We got to wait till the election's over, and then we yeah. got to go to that process. So we we take care of this. You and I are on the same page. Yeah, I just think I think that, we're uh, all on the same page with it, Bob. Yeah, I I because when you read that slide, it just makes it seem like well, it's four hundred dollars. We need to have something that says it could be more somewhere down the road. Otherwise. You know, they could just say, hey, $400, I'll take my chance. So it, when I read that, I say, oh, okay, it's $400. Mm -hmm. You know, to me, $400 is not a lot of money. Some people might think it's a lot, but uh, you never know. I would I have, have something that make it sound like it could be more down the way. But I think with John's suggestion about saying that it's posted and, you know, you know, uh, we posted to the National Registry, I think yeah. the combination of that, you know, gives it a little bit more credence, if you will. Okay. I think it's uh, a fair point because, Sean, I have it on my notes for January. You know what I mean? Because the election's over, let's put it in then to get, get way ahead of it. You know what I mean? Right. That's what I you know. need. You know, we need to start much earlier. And, and then it's done. And Maybe we uh, just should say to a penalty, not put the amount. Then, if we put no amount, they don't know what it is. I, yeah, I, it's just a suggestion. That, don't put, don't, We're don't subject put to it's just a civil penalty. Yeah. Civil um, monetary penalty. Norris, Norris was trying to talk. Go ahead. No, I I agree with what Shauna says. Don't put a don't put a number there. Yeah. Okay. Don't put a number whatsoever. Don't don't even put a number there and just put it like uh, Shauna said, a monetary penalty. All right, we can do that. That's not a problem. Good. That's easy yeah. enough to fix. Good. Anything else with CE? To the general public who may be on, any questions, comments, concerns? Staff, okay. Now, it's the next section under use path, and I have some notes here. So I don't know what number this is, 111, 112, I think 113, introduction to use path. Go to the next one, okay. It says 2022 use path will be good from as we give the dates. Last week, like last Friday, a week ago today, there was something that came out and they're extending it for a year. Am I understanding that correctly? Someone asked me about that too. And when I looked on the foundation's website, I didn't see anything changed from through 2023. I got an email from the foundation. If you subscribe to Angel's emails, yeah, I got an email. For some saying, reason, I didn't get one. It says that they extended it a year. So, John, when you, when you have time and you find that email, can you forward it to me? Do you still yeah. have it? I do have it. I have to find it. Yes. Okay. When you find no big rush, because I didn't get it for some reason. We may want to make a star there and just make that current. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. I, I I too got an email, like John said, I have to find it. And I, I, you know, was speed reading on the plane, you know, one of those type of things. And um I made a note here that thinking that you had gotten it you know I, you would think that the states they would let the states know but. normally i get stuff uh i don't know maybe they already have me as well gone okay yeah so it, it should say the 2020 
use path will be good through the 2020 use path will still be good from 1122 through 123123. And you know what? I, I suspect that going forward, we're going to see more of this where they're just going to not make many changes and and keep things and maybe have addendums instead of uh, revisions of the whole manual. Right, because otherwise, they, how are they going to have people take it every two years if they don't change anything? Yeah, well, we're right now in that period where you can suggest changes for the next version. Right. So, um, all right, the five rules of use path. I think they're clean. I think one one fifteen is okay. Uh, again, one fifteen, one sixteen. Is there any? Because I asked, did anybody have anything else in use path that you had concerns or issues or changes to? My well, only. We, one, go ahead. All right, we heard a lot that people just wanted the use path. Most of it removed. And we're trying, if we're trying to make this just the three hours and we're keeping the supervisor stuff, then I think some of the use path slides can probably, you know, just maybe just a one or two highlights of use path that are ish that seem to be issues with people, but I don't think we need to go through all of it. And that goes back, Linda, I understand that goes back to teaching. You don't have to read everything to everyone. Right. You know, you as an instructor can go through, you, you've had it, you take a seven hour class every two years, you know, here are basics. I don't care. You can take whatever and the balance of folks think you want to take things out. Fine. You want to leave it fine. I'm open to whatever you folks want to do. Thoughts? As far as use path goes, I think less is best. I mean, everybody sits through use path, but it's yep. important to have the things that they do have there. I mean, records, work files. How many times have we seen that as a problem? Yep. So. I mean, but I think where it says the, you know, the basic rules are, and we have the rules. I mean, like you said, everybody sits through the course, has to take it. I don't think we have to have as many slides on it. I think we're going to, we're thinking about taking them out. What if we just had a slide about it? Uh, recent issues that the commission has had to, or recent concerns of the commission or something, and just talk about work files or something going in a different direction. Yeah, I think, 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 Linda in a submarine? Yeah, she has two. I think she has two systems going. Yeah. I'm getting rid of one of them right now. Okay, Miss Epps. So uh, good morning. I just muted uh, the other system. Maybe you can talk now. Linda? She looks like she's on mute. She had two systems open. Yeah, the one, I mean, just on the screen, it shows the mute button, so. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, clear. Oh, perfect, okay. All right, so. Now you have to tell me what the question was again, because trying to figure this out, I lost it. We were trying to maybe eliminate portions of the use path slides in here um, because we take, you know, everyone takes the seven hour use path class. Right. And then John suggested maybe having one slide of, and John, I don't want to put words in your mouth, uh, recent issues or concerns or whatever with use path. Am I, John, feel free to jump in. Yeah, I just sent an email to everybody with the appraisal foundations notice that it was extended. I just put it up on the. Thank you. Um, okay. The, 
Um, yeah, instead of, uh, I mean, what, what are our concerns? We want to make sure that this, everybody knows that it's part of their state statute, so therefore you have to abide by it with the one exception. Um, and then um, uh, and then just go in and talk about our, you know, I think it's, we have to say that the, the uh, you know, on the ethics, record keeping, company, scope of work, and the jurisdiction exception, I think we can keep that stuff um, and then just go in instead of going into the record keeper rule at each thing, we just maybe have one slide talk about, um, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, Sean is right. I mean, our issue has been this, this, this record keeping rule that, and, and showing up in the work file. Right. The record keeping and I have gotten... I'd say in the in the last six months to a year, a lot of questions, especially from residential appraisers, about they've asked me to do this. How do I do it? Well, if you're not competent and don't know how to do it, then you shouldn't do it. So I think you know maybe a little bit of a discussion on competency that if you're not sure if you can do it. That's really such a struggle though for appraisers because how do they move on? Well, they have to become competent. They have to- Right, but I mean, there's there's no process and the process should be discussed on how this happens. Well, I mean, that's not <laughs> true, Linda. I mean, USPAP talks about, you know, lining up with somebody who's done it before, have maybe right. have someone review your work. You're or right. Or actually just telling the client, I, I've done that recently. I had a special purpose property type and it happened to be one that I've done the properties that, that are similar below it and on the other each side of it, but never that one. And I let the client know that, you know, I, I've done this and I've done this, but I've never done specifically this, but this is what I'm going to do if I get to get awarded the assignment that didn't get the assignment. But Right. But, but what I'm saying, though, is that most appraisers don't know about that step. And they go ahead and try to do it anyway because they want the money, especially on the residential side. And that we have a policy that I've always used. And if somebody's got like, we had um, a house up in the Northeast corner of the state. It was like 6,000 square feet on 25 acres of land or something like that. And the appraiser just, there's no way that she could handle it. So I went with her because I've done them. So I went with her and walked her through all the steps so that she could learn how to do it and what was important. But there's not a lot of ways that a, a single appraiser, especially residential, working on their own can get that person to be able to help them. So they end up having to do the appraisal that they're not qualified to do, or they lose the money. So there okay. has to be something that should tell them how, how, how you're going to do this. Well, this goes back to the business thing. You know, we don't want to cross the line on the business part of it, but maybe what maybe the way they handle this is maybe we uh, one option would be to maybe we just list underneath ethics what have been the ethical issues that we've seen as a commission or Linda has seen. What have been the record keeper rules that we have seen? And maybe just put a, a couple of quick comments instead of preaching use PAP and telling them how to do use PAP, we're just focusing instead on the issues that are coming before the commission or have come before the commission, not just recently, but in, in years past. Now, for instance, ethics, we could put a little comment, not taking your continuing education and say you did is an ethics issue, you know, <laughs> uh, record keeping rule, showing up for uh, uh, experience uh, credits when you're, I mean, when you're, you know, sponsoring somebody and not make, not having a complete work file or a, an adequate work file. Uh, and then competency, we have another thing. Scope of work is a little bit different. You know, that, I don't know, I don't think we've had many issues on scope of work, have we, Linda? No, I just, you know, they'll say that somebody will ask me something and I'm like, well, what does the scope of work say? And then you have to agree whether you agree with that scope of work because you're the one who makes that determination of whether it's sufficient. Uh, so maybe we just make a comment that, you know, complaints have come in and, it, it, uh, probably a, a, a more detailed scope of work could could have resolved the issue or something like that. I know right. we're walking a fine line because we don't want to say that, hey, we we dealt with something we didn't deal with or. Right. But, you know, yeah. OK. It's just an option. 
Okay, so this is part of a, a line item on that on that one page, John. Is that what you? Yeah, yeah. And I don't I don't think we need to put the jurisdictional exception up here because that that really is an issue that come to us. I mean, the only jurisdictional exception we dealt with really has been when we changed the regulation, but that's different. And then um, the Wheelabrator case that uh, that was brought before us. Yeah. But I don't think we need the jurisdictional exception here because we're not preaching, we're not teaching use PAP and we really haven't had any issues with that. Okay. I, I don't take my word. You guys discuss it, tell me what you think. Are people okay with that? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Shauna? Norris? I'm good. Okay. okay, now that said, Vicki had asked me and Linda to uh, look into a slide pertaining to jurisdictional exception. We've talked about this and I'm actually, you know, the left side and my right side of my brain have been playing tennis going back and forth trying to, and they haven't dropped the ball yet, trying to figure out uh, if, if it's really necessary or not to do that. And I know um, I have mentioned that, uh, that we should be talking about, perhaps talking about specific cases. So I think in this section, I think we could add in the next slide or the slide after, after we go into record keeping rule, we could just say, just have a separate slide about if we decide to include it of jurisdictional exceptions and then just talk about the cases and stuff like that. I'm just not sure if, if it's really our job to teach that, to talk about that. I'm still on the fence on that. Don't we beat the lip? Don't we beat it like an old horse in use pack? Yeah, we do. That's why I'm thinking that it's not yep. it's <laughs> not here. The only thing I, I the only reason why I was thinking about it originally is that appraisers should uh, you know should be responsible for case law, but that isn't really our job as a commission to be That's right. teaching that. It should be coming from somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, if you guys don't feel it's necessary, then I mean, the I less think, slides, the better, so. Yeah, I yeah. just don't think it. I mean, if we're going to do that, I mean, that'd be something that, I, you know, I could do separately. I don't want to say too loud because I know Jackie's listening, but in a separate two-hour seminar or something like that, that could get the word out to this. To, yeah. but, but I don't think it's our job to, to go there. All set. Okay. Moving forward to the USPAP record-keeping case study. Do you want to keep it in place? Is that where you you're good with it? No, I think I think the that record keeping case, and I'm looking at it. I mean, it's older. We've already used it. They've already had this record keeping case because they took this previous course. So I think the notes that I had was that we were going to um, focus more so on competency and talk about the hybrid appraisal yeah. desktop appraisal and not do so much with the record keeping and take that particular case study out because it's a case study that was already previously used so we're like okay we're going to still talk about the whatever the smith case or whatever the case was um so no so we had decided not to use the case study and to use more relevant information under competency with the hybrid and the desktop appraisal i think right linda yeah. I think that's you're right it. yeah so. okay great then We've taken care of that. It, it, we all we all are on the same page, commission members. Am I correct or not correct? Fine. Okay. Yeah, I'm on that page, I think. So we sound good. All right. Now we move then into the use PAP competency portion. Since everyone reviewed this beforehand, I asked, are there any thoughts or changes in this section under the use PAP competency slides and case study? The floor is open. Leave as is. Um, you know what? On the case study file itself, 119 I have, maybe we can just, instead of just making this a case study, because that's what we're trying to convey, that, hey, this is an issue and this is what came up. 
then maybe we don't use it as a case study. Maybe we just bring it up here underneath the, uh, we have the record keeping rule and then we have the work file and we include that as those two slides together as an example or something. Or maybe even in the notes underneath the work file on 117 in, in the notes to the instructor, we can put that in so it gives the instructor something to talk about. Okay, so <clears throat> under the record keeping, that case study, you want to put it in the notes. Yeah, we don't have to put, the, yeah, just to, you know, this so that, yeah, something in okay. there just to give an example so that the, the, the instructor has an example. If someone starts saying to them, you know, have they, well, because, you know, the funny thing about these work files is, in talking to different people, what they keep in the, what one one appraiser keeps in the file is different than another person keeps in the file. And then I realized that some appraisers that work for corporations, you know, they have different, maybe have some other things too to consider too. So um, I think it might be prudent just to put something in there so that the instructor can actually, instead of cruising through this, can actually stop, pause, and has uh, something to talk about. Okay, very good. No. So the all case studies were, will be moved to the notes. So we're not deleting them. We're just moving them. Yeah, and just summarize them. Yeah. That's fair. Very good. Gotcha. That, that makes sense, everybody? I mean. I think it's a good idea. I mean, that's just my thought. Okay. Let's move now to the competency again. Any changes, suggestions, additions, deletions? So we're on 122 now, right? Yes, thereabouts. Or it says appraisal law use pot competency. Yes. Anything in that entire section? 122, 123, 124. When you guys prepared, did you have anything to add or subtract? We could probably talk on that topic all day. <laughs> Do you want to leave it all as is? Well, I think, as I understood it, I thought it was a good idea what John has suggested about taking this particular case study, move it to the notes because it's already been used, if you will. And we had talked about adding the desktop and hybrid appraisal to this section, Linda, is that right? This is where we're gonna put it in competency or no? I don't, I don't know if they want, but it's not really use path, but I mean, so, but it is, that, you know. That, that comes later. Okay, that's fair. All right. Those things come under and we'll see new issues. It okay, on the trend, okay, that's fair. All right, then that's fine. Okay. Um, so the only, only suggested change here would be taking the case study, moving it to notes, although we're not deleting it. I agree. Is that okay with folks? Shauna, Norris, Linda, John? I think so, it's all right. Okay. Okay, very good. Now we get into one of the newer areas, the fair lending. Um, Help me with what slide number, go ahead. Yeah, fair lending, the next one. Next slide, please. Thank you. What number slide is that so I can mark on mine? 132, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. When you look at 132, 133, you know, on your, your, your work notes, and then we have another case study. Does the, the case study then go into our notes again? But was there anything to add or subtract or edit under the fair lending side? This is a uh, an increasing. Um, you, you know, um, I just want to say, Jerry. So, uh, Vicky, you were on that seminar. Did anybody else, Jerry, you were on there for an hour. Yeah, um, I was there for about forty minutes, John. Yeah. So there were, they they uh, came out with a publication, and I got the emails, and I was going to follow up. My off screen doesn't come until next Tuesday, so I'm not going to do it next Tuesday. Follow up with their publication that they came out that I think it might be prudent that we either. Uh, we can go through that. Uh, a couple of us can go through that publication 
and then decide that this might, there might be some issues in here that we should address as a commission, if not in the law module, but maybe in a one of our meetings. Um, but one of the, th regarding this slide, these two slides, one of the things that came up that might wanna go in the notes and that we might wanna add later after we research it was one of the appraisers uh, mentioned um, about, uh, basically it boils down to geo competency. And, uh, and I, I think we should have something in these two slides talking about geo competency, whether it be in the, the competency section or here uh, talking about it too, because it, it seems to be that the problems that are arising of this are because of the appraisers coming in and you know, just looking for the comps you know, in, a, in an immediate thing and not understanding the dynamics of individual neighborhoods. And we have that here in Connecticut, if you look at New Haven, uh, Manchester. Manchester actually has neighborhoods delineated. Hartford has, uh, I think, what, 17 or 19 neighborhoods delineated. Um, I think it might be prudent to, uh, to put something in here about geocompetency, but we might wanna wait. I know we're pressed for time, but this appraiser was talking about, instead of looking, starting with location, did you catch that part of the, the seminar? And start mm -hmm. starting with location, you start selecting all the comps in your area in, in, around that are similar, meaning uh, all the, if you got two bedroom apartment units or whatever, and then you create a chart showing all these attributes of it. And then from there, you select where your subject is, and then you kind of create your, your selection of area that you're coming from. And you include that as part of your work file, which I thought was, was fascinating because it's a different way of thinking than we've actually been trained as appraisers to think, or let's just say, have evolved as appraisers, how we think, uh, you know, through the evolution of being an appraiser. Okay, so my thought is, John, since you have already determined, and I think we all are in agreement that the jurisdictional exception doesn't have to be done, perhaps you want to take on this? Yeah, all I'm saying is I think we should read that no, book. That's not and, my question. and I think that guy talked about this because he had some slides up on it and they're making that slide presentation available. And that might be something that we can uh, include. The only reason why I'm hesitant is he did make one slight comment about we're still looking into, uh, I didn't really catch what he said, but it sounded like it's still an opinion, not a methodology yet or anything like that. So I don't want us to be preaching an yeah. opinion as a methodology when it, that's not our job. Okay, I so think, should John, we, could this John, be a trend? Should this could this be under the trend? That's exactly right, Vicky. Where I had my notes for said John to add on. That's later in the thing with uh, trends here, and I think to be careful is that I think it would be good if we have if when they give you that link that we can send people that link. Because it's exactly what you're saying, John. It's it's an opinion here, not a not a. It, it's in a gray area. Let's let's call it what it is. It's an important item that people. If we've got to come to grips with it here, but I think it's the new trend here, and that's the place to really pop it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now Linda had said in one of our previous meetings that we haven't had any. Um, case any any complaints that came in indicating any kind of uh, redlining or anything like that but you know now that it's becoming more you know uh, talked about it may be that that is going on and we may you know have more cases so I think it might be a prudent maybe in the like you just said that's probably a good idea just put it there but I think we need to be just a little careful on yep why well, we... I, I, just, I also just wanted to say, in terms of the fair lending itself, one of the things, even though the complaints may come in, um, you know, we would have them also reach out to, like, you know, their realtor or, you know, the board of realtors to say, you know, this is a, you know, complaint that I have against the individual person or whatever. So it's not necessarily under our purview, per se, you know, so it's a... I don't know that necessarily the department would handle that specific issue. I can put it that, I put it that way. Yeah. It's, it's more like the CHRO thing, the commission on, you know, 
human, you know. Okay. CHROs on, on the CHRO. Yeah, so that's why I think the only thing we should really be talking about is the geocompetency because, um, you know, and then maybe just kind of mentioned it and then the, and then the notes, the instructor can have, you know, competent, have a discussion on what is geocompetency and do we actually have it defined anywhere? Does anybody define it? It's a term that's constantly used, but I don't know if it's actually- No one defined. has defined it, John, because it's a very hot topic. Hmm. They have really have gotten into it. And I, I, I'm living with this. Everything he was saying, we already have done it because we're a specialty type of arena. You know, location is one thing, but there's only, there's only so many hospitals. You know, there's only so many cancer centers. And so it's one thing for location, but it, location is one of the last things we look at to be candid with, them. you know, it's- And he world. talked about that. Yep, it's, it's the world I've been living in, but it's a, what you're saying is you, you, no one can agree on it right now because it's, it, it's, it's not a methodology, yes, it's a trend. And that's where I thought where that new trends, I made a lot of notes here that, you know, where your area of what, I mean, your class that you had us, you know, I could only jump on for 45 minutes or thereabouts. You yeah, know. but what, what tracked me in this class was, you know, I get things periodically, but I, I was surprised that there was, you know, the ASA, the Appraisal Foundation, everybody was kind of promoting this. So it, it's a reality. Uh, I don't want to say reality. It's, it's an issue. And I think we should try to incorporate it uh, somehow, but I think we need to just pause and just you know, it may be the type of thing that we don't add here now and rush. We just maybe discuss it a little bit more and 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 bat it around before we end up. I guess saying I'm trying to say is uh, say something that may not be appropriate or may not be applicable or that you know we actually open up a can of worms that really doesn't exist. You know, because um, we don't have the complaints coming in. You know, well, that's where the that's where it comes into the new trends. I thought you know. Yeah. This is what's going on. Okay. Can we do the same thing with a case study? I'm looking. We got 20 minutes, folks. Well, okay. Case study. Does that go into the notes as well under the uh, fair lending facts? That one would. That the, that old case would. But I did have something here that talked about that. I just have the acronym CLEAR. I'm not certain if there's something we should be taking from CLEAR. C-L-E-A-R? I don't know what that is. Was that, well, I think that was, um, I think that was a study and I think there was a case, it was a Connecticut case. I'll look into it more. I, I remember there being a Connecticut case from Clear, wherever Clear okay. was, it was some, something that I read and I'll put it together and if it's useful, it's fine, if not, then. Yeah, there was the news article. I don't right. think it was a case. I think it was just a news article where the gentleman was commenting that that had happened to him here in Connecticut, but we didn't we didn't have any information on that. Okay, that's fine. Okay, maybe there's nothing. Okay, that's fine. I just have a question mark. Okay, very good. Okay. So then that brings us now to enforcements. We have those one, two. Three, four, five, you know, violations, life cycle of a complaint, so on and so forth. Are there any additions, subtractions, edits, anything that when you went through that you made notes to, uh, you wanted to bring to the table to discuss? Well, appeal is spelt wrong, but other than that. And enforcement should be enforcement singular, not enforcement with an S. All right. Well, let me say this. There's some inconsistencies between, um, they say type of enforcement and then it says enforcement. So we'll, we'll decide on which one, but the, um, I might put enforcement. Okay. On the first one, on the actual, I think it's, it might be singular, but we'll see. We'll, we'll check it out. Linda Sepso, you say, you were saying something, and I'm sorry, it didn't come through clear on my end. It, just that the word appeal is spelt wrong. That's all. I just noticed that. Okay. Uh, 
Um, We're okay with complaint life cycle. Oh, I'm just thinking on on um, slide 140, where we have appraisal enforcement. We, on the last bullet, we have uh, we, you know revoke the license and report to AC. Shouldn't they be two separate things? Because we can do one or the other. No, it's required. But if you if you revoke, it must be reported. Anything beyond the letter of caution has to be reported to the AS to the ASC. So it's not. You know, we don't have the option to do it. If there's a revocation, it has to be reported. Anything beyond a letter of caution is reported right, so, to right, the right, ASC. Right. Yeah. So it's a continuous motion, if you will. Okay. Anything else? Leave what we have here. Okay. Do you want the case? Okay. The case study on hearings? Is that notes as well? I would put that as notes only because of, you know, it was an old one. Okay. All right. Anything from the public on this section? Or staff, members of the commission? Can I just say one thing? I don't remember if you guys remember that case in which the guy came and he said he had done the study and he had gone in and he had done a visual. <laughs> and then we said, well, how did that happen when the shades were down? Because he took a picture of it. Do you remember that? Yeah, years ago. Yeah, that was yeah, that was a while ago. That's why I said we can use a different case study and just move this to notes. But anyway, thank you. Sorry. No I digress. It's all right. I'm uh, navigating the DCP website. I am all ears. Is there updates needed? Are we current? Is there changes? I. This is an area you have to tell me. I am. I'm a fish out of water when it comes to this. I have to defer to Linda on this because she works directly with um, the licensing services department, if you will. And it's my understanding that they have dedicated staff to do all of the website updates relative to each individual area. Where we are in terms of uh, real estate appraisal, I don't know. I, I, I can't say, I, I can't say with knowledge. So um, uh, this is Ms. Burtz on speaking, uh, Commissioner. So I am responsible as the board coordinator to do some web administration um, for the boards, um, just general information, agenda, board meetings, that kind of thing. Um, it may fall under operations now and or as Attorney Bullock has stated, um, they may have a de designated um dedicated person or personnel that will do some web administration or employ um, IT help desks to assist with any changes with this. I certainly can look at it as a review because I'm doing quite a bit of web administration for the boards. Um, I've been doing that for a couple of months, okay? But if there's anything here that does not look um, appropriate and or needs a review, you know, it would probably be good to um, for the commissioners to actually review it with someone from licensing, uh, probably uh, Mr. Elliott or his designee, what have you, to see if something needs to be taken away or changed, that kind of thing. Was there anything when you look when you look at this that you think needs to be changed? As you've been, you've got a couple of months of explore, or if not more, I'm not, you know, it, w w based on your experience. Do we look okay, what we have here? It looks, uh, uh, one of the things that I'm doing, um, commissioners, is just trying to, with the director of operations, is just trying to streamline things to make everything look, this is a military term, dress right, dress, right? You know, all boards have some kind of supplemental information that they want to provide. If, if I'm looking at this page right now, it looks kind of busy, right? Um you know, view approved courses. I think that's that's a good hyper uh, 
hyperlink section. Um, but if I click on that hyperlink, what will it lead to? So I certainly can um, review that myself to make sure hyperlinks are working. That's a critical piece. I can tell you that for sure. Um, you know, people should know that the information that is linked is current and accurate um, to the programming that's coming out of this board. Um, most popular, I don't think that that may necessarily be necessary, right? Either it's one or the other, right? You, you either want persons to be directed to the page that is um, the hyperlinks that are um, most uh, popular in terms of what they need access to right away right? Quick access is another uh, terminology, but most popular is fine. A lot of this information also may be somewhat linked to SOTS, to the Secretary of State's office. So I do need to do that review as well. I've not looked directly at this page, but I'll certainly make a note of it and um, then bring any comments uh, to you, Jerry, and then you can decide whether or not it should be an agenda item for the regularly scheduled board meeting. Okay, okay, I can do that. Very good. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. We, we welcome your input. Thank you. Um, okay. Folks, now I wanted to make sure we had the adequate time here is the new trends. This is uh, where, so, you know, and, and John, we can pick up where you were at, but we have um, nationally, we go through here, we have seven bullets. Replacing licensing affairs, you know, appraisers is concerned. You can let your eyes do the walking. Um, this is where I think it's open for discussion. You want to edit, take something out. You want to make additions. This is this is our time right here, folks. So have at it. The floor is open. Well, the one that says um, the 2024 the Public Act about the three months prior, we've already addressed that. We've moved that up to um, the education section, right? Yes. Yeah. I have a problem with the first one. I think we should just take that out. Replacing license, licensed appraisers is a concern. I know that came up in that thing, but um, and I know there's a couple of people around there pushing, you know, going to, uh, uh, you know, statistics and things like that instead of using. But I think with what we saw going for the fallout of Zillow and stuff like that, licensing is here to stay. So I don't think it's going to go away. So I, I think we I don't think we should even bring that that concern up. That's that's an opinion thing. That's not something that should come from us. That's my opinion. But aren't you concerned about the fact that there's a shortage of appraisers? Well, that's a different issue. That's not well, that's we can replacing do that licensed appraisers is a concern. Residential appraisers are aging out. I don't know anybody that's under 60. A couple of the people that work for me that are much younger. But I mean, so I, I took this as to mean replacing licensed appraisers is a concern because the appraisers are aging out and people aren't coming into the business. It takes- Well, that's a different thing than saying replacing licensed appraisers because, you know, the way I read that is, you know, you're getting rid of the licensing for appraisers. I mean, I, I think you, you, we might want to rephrase that and say, you know, um, we got the Pyrea program, which is should be in there, new trends. Um, you know, uh, attracting new appraisers to the industry. So what do you want? What do you want to say? What do you want number one to say? Well, when I read this, my concern was: Are these our opinions, or are these something the commission should even be concerned with? It just I think nationally. nationally there are several trends, and I think the, the major one is is attracting uh, appraisers to the industry and getting over the uh, barrier of the, the barriers of uh, of the barriers of entry, the barriers of, help me out here, Jerry, I'm, I'm stumbling for words, the barrier of entry, basically. And, uh, you know, and now we have, you know, the Pyrea program is a test model. It's in the testing phases to, uh, which I think we're gonna talk about a little bit. Um, but I think that's, I think we need to rephrase that. 
Okay, so attracting say what Linda appraisers said. to the industry and yeah. eliminating barriers of entry. No, not eliminating. Um, because we, we still need barriers to entry. We, we can't water us down, then we ruin the public trust. What are you, okay, so what do you, okay, we, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to write what you said. Attracting appraisers to the industry. Period. Yeah, that's it, just send it. it. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Thank you. All right, that's number one. Number two. Are we okay with that? Is that what I'm following you, Vicki? Number two on the- No, no, program? I'm saying number one was attracting appraisers to the industry, oh, period. Okay. That was the end of that. I'm saying let's go whatever we're going down the list because the thing for Connecticut is number seven. We had the national trend and then we had in Connecticut as a separate, you know, entry or line. All right, so on the second one though, aren't we referring to education? Changes, instead of changes to the licensing requirements, is changing to the education requirements of licensing are having some impact, correct? Are you talking about nationally or are you talking about Connecticut? Because number one- No, nationally, everybody had okay. to change the, the, the educational update. Okay, so what do you want me to say? Changes to the, I'm sorry. Educational requirements. Okay, educational, uh-huh. Of okay. licensing is okay. having some impact. Okay, all right, that's very good, thank you. What about this fees thing? I, I'm not, this is new to me. I, I, it, where, where is this coming from? Am I missing something? I've just always told not to talk about fees. When we were going through all the AMC legislation and the law. This is national. Yeah. One through six is national. Number seven is Connecticut. No, I understand that, but oh, okay. is there something? Well, I think, I think that it used to be that there was like a, a um, A mindset that said the fee is this and it was always that now the fees are all over the place even on the residential side so i don't think i don't think we need no, that I just get rid of it and reasonable. yeah took it out took it out redacted thank you okay um so we've taken out one or we've changed one. We've taken out four. Yeah. Uh, number seven in Connecticut, detrimental property conditions, notes, mold, and so forth. Uh, Are there any other major issues that go off of that? I, I mean, I don't know. Is the Crumbling Foundation issue still an issue? That was years ago. Yes, it is. Oh, it's big out in there. Yeah, yeah. you're in yeah. Eastern Connecticut, it's huge. Yeah. Okay. That's There's fine. a link. We'll provide the link to the Department of Housing because that um, is under the Department of Housing's, um, okay. I'll say, you know. Be good. That's really good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's we don't, this, I mean, what, on the Western side of the state, we really don't have anything like that. What's this number six? Big data is not a threat. I can see the appraisers in the class going jumping up and down over that saying yes it is <laughs> well because when i when i when it says big data i'm thinking like services like costar and places like that and one of the issues is a lot of appraisers just can't afford that i mean i, I subscribe to it i subscribe but i just got put on the plate that i had to go to a national thing or reduce my area that wasn't going to solve me so there you know it's a so I'm paying for it, but I know a lot of my peers can't afford to pay for that. So right. why are the we saying big data is not a threat? Why are we saying that? Well, I don't know. If you go up with the notes, all of this stuff that was taken from the national trend, wherever it came from, and it came off, I probably should have had the link, but wherever it came from, the notes um, address whatever the thing is. Like number one underneath you see, number one, I'm replacing you know, license appraisers is a concern. Whatever the, the trend was, the notes are underneath of it. So whatever number six is, if we go to wherever it is, it's somewhere, the notes from that statement are provided. I don't want to interpret what it is. Is it the next one? Is it below this? I don't know. No, I can't tell. Yeah, I, I think we need to, I'm not, I'm, I'm not uncomfortable with that because I know all the issues would, you know, if you've been following a little bit of the Zillow thing, which I haven't been following too detailed, but uh, I mean, um, I think we, I don't think we should go there. 
Okay, take it. It was natural, but I can take it out. That's not a problem. It's Jerry? out. It's out. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I get worried about certain things here across the line. One is talking on fees, and uh, this is an you know an area that that Zillow case is really. Okay, okay. You just had it. I'm sorry, uh, Madam Chair, and you just had it when you were um, scrolling. You I, you were coming across it. I thought you had that information as to the specifics on each of the things. I'll take it out. I don't have a problem with that, but I was just wanting to see where it was in the notes, what they were saying in the notes. Okay, here we go. Um, yes, Attorney see, Bullock, let me. I appreciate that. Certainly. So here it is here. So number six, it was um, fee. That's what they were saying about fees. That's what the national trend was. Okay, but here's here's number six. And here's number six. Okay. Can we just read that for a minute? And yes, where certainly. it came from is where, I don't know where it came from. That's, for, that's something else. But go ahead. Number six. That's what, that's what this was with reference to. I'm happy to read it. Can everyone see it? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, oh, sorry. I, I was trying I understand to understand what that note. I understand what that note is saying. I can take it out. Not a problem. Yeah. We'll take it out. Not a problem. Not a problem. Not a problem. Very good. Done. There we go. Maybe we should just put a number up there that says other. <laughs> there it is. Hmm. I mean, I think it's something positive, what's being stated. The problem is it becomes really expensive. And on a, well, on a, being residential, I think I'm not sure I need to know about the whole country. I just need to know about the area I'm appraising. So I don't know. Somebody might want to go somewhere else and do yeah. something else. Well, somewhere I, think, else. I think the word big data is a trigger. Okay. You know, so if it, so if it, if we put something else in there to like um, just saying data sources or something like that. That's well, not data sources are not a threat. Somebody's taking, yeah. <coughs> yeah. I don't think it's a I'm just, I'm just, you know what? I'm just saying no because we're, we're you, you know, that's a still up for debate, and I think we're taking a side by saying that, and I don't okay. think we should be doing that. I'll that's take it question. out. That's my opinion. If you okay. guys want to leave it in, that's your no, story. it's out. I think. I don't think people, you know, have an opinion one way or another. So out is okay. It's all right. Fine. Okay. So four is out and six is out. Right. Thank you. Is there anything to be added to new trends? Well, this is where I had asked if we wanted to put something about the hybrid. I'm not sure if that's still a Concerned but I, th I think you were good to have it on the next section. Do you know what I mean? The next page. Okay, so that was it. That was the only thing you were saying. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think that if for those who are teaching this class, you, you right there is 20 minutes, you know, because <laughs> people can get really, you know, yeah. rightfully so wound up. And I think keeping it generic is the right way to attack it, you know, and they're here, they're growing, they may be gone, they may be, you know, morph into something else, but I think it's correct doing it at a, I call it the 10,000 foot level, you know, and, you know, go ahead. for a while during COVID, we did these mostly just to see what was going on. And one of the things that really bothered me is that they did have somebody inspect the property, but the, the qualifications of the person who inspected the property were never defined. It could be, you know, your uncle. It, it didn't have to be somebody who was, you would expect it to be some kind of a building inspector or an appraiser trainee, something like that but it's not. And that to me, that's kind of scary that you are now asked as an appraiser to take information from somebody who hasn't got a clue. So we stopped doing them. 
and I gave them an, a lecture on why I thought they were wrong, but um, I don't know. I, I, there's, there's not a real process that's defined that says that, you know, somebody who's looking at the property has to have some kind of qualifications. So I don't think we should, either we should have a standard that says in the state of Connecticut, if you're going to do the hybrids, then the person who does the inspection has to have one, two, and three. And the person who's doing the appraisal gathering has to be a certified appraiser. I don't know that that could ever happen, but anyway. I think there's gonna be 10 minutes of moaning and groaning over this, but other than that. Okay, any other thoughts or comments? You wanna keep it in there, that slide? I think we should keep the waivers and hybrids in there. I, I don't know where the waivers comes from, but the hybrids, yes. The so I know, the, on the, go ahead, I'm sorry, Linda. The waivers are the bank waivers where the bank will decide the, the risk is not enough. So they don't bother with the appraisal. Because of the diminished level. The, the um, I do know, I just did a commercial, uh, I had a commercial appraiser from out of state. I looked him up, he was reputable. And he was doing a, uh, a uh, HUD rental survey that he's done many times, which he can do from his desk, but he needed someone to reinspect the property. And all he asked me to do was to go take photos. Right. You know, and so, but he was trying to find someone who had experience uh, with that, of doing these things and appraising. So, uh, I mean, it's, I think it's gonna keep happening and it's evolving, it's here, it's gonna spread. I think we should address it. I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to going to slide 157 here on this. I don't, I don't think we're ever gonna get rid of it because it's there and it's huge. But I, I, I wish there was ways to put some kind of responsibility on the people that are involved in it. Okay, I need to interject right now. We are one minute after 10. Are we allowed to go another five minutes on this system? As far as I know, Commissioner, yes. Okay. All right. Folks, do you have, can we, everyone available for another five minutes to try to wrap this up? Sure. Okay. We get into, if hearing no objections, we'll keep moving. Connecticut trends with uh, Pyrea, Para, excuse me. I think it's good to have it there mm -hmm. as we still work through this. And it's not bad to hear as a discussion point of, uh, I think this is where you're gonna get most class participation with new trends, waivers and hybrids, Connecticut trends, and then also what's coming up in 2024. But with a lot, let me not get ahead. Anything we wanna add or subtract with um, Carol? I just think in the notes, we should tell the instructor that the commission has been actively following this or, and uh, has had, uh, you know, meetings addressing this and is, you know, following at looking at how other states are handling this and then kind of just leave it at that or something because, uh, you know, we, we saw how California has jumped one way and now they're thinking about going another way, that kind of thing from that conference we had. So I, I just think, uh, I think we should be some some a little bit more information in there for the instructor to just clarify what why we aren't doing anything. That that line that says Connecticut has yet to determine whether to adopt Perea as an alternative pathway. John, I wasn't found. Do you want to add to this or? Uh, well, I'm wondering if we should rephrase that and just say. Uh, the Connecticut Real Estate Commission, Real Estate Appraisal Commission, is uh, is is actively 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 monitoring uh, the Pyrea as a, uh, the Pyrea as an alternative path uh, as an alternative education <laughs> pathway or something like that. Okay, so the Connecticut Real Estate Commission is active, appraisal commission, is actively monitoring Perea uh, as an alternative educational pathway. Yeah. 
All right, that's fine. In the notes, of course. No, I don't know if we should even change it in that slide because that slide, and just leave it there. And that, and, and you know, in the notes, I don't think it really. I I said no. I know I said notes, but the notes thing is, you know, this is going. This is continuing to evolve, and maybe we don't have to discuss that here. Maybe Vicky and I could discuss that since, and maybe talk about what goes in the notes, and then review it. But I do think it should say Connecticut. What we what you just said. Uh, Vicky should instead of Connecticut has yet to determine whether to adopt Pyria as an alternative pathway say that Connecticut the real estate appraisal commission is considering uh, okay I'm going to um, uh, put this Connecticut real estate appraisal commission is actively monitoring Pyria as an alternative educational pathway I'm going to change it to that is that fair Jerry yeah, I think we're fine, you know, because this is evolving and um, uh, I, I think this topic, I think the fines and I think our next slide are huge that we as a commission, assuming we're all still here um, in January, are going to have to really dedicate a fair amount of time to bring this to fruition. Okay. Uh, where we want to do with that because i know with the election i'm just calling it what it is you know it gets to be a little bit of a sticky point and things you know qualifying it out what we're looking at with um the fines that we've discussed you know and start that process and then but i think they all kind of go dovetail with the next slide coming in 2024 you know the dcp license three months prior the question was presented an hour, 45 minutes ago, whatever. What do we do if they don't have their CE done by, you know, January 31st, you know, um, and that Linda had brought up. And I think these are um, topics that uh, we, it, it, we're evolving, we're growing and, and so forth. So what we put today in August you know, I think we keep it generic here as, as we have it here, but boy, when we get to, when whoever's teaching this and let's call it what it is, you know, it will become, you know, in a year from now or a year and a half from now, uh, when people start to take these classes, we're gonna be really into, we're gonna have these flushed out. And I really think those are the three big things as of right now that we're gonna have to deal with. And I get how politics plays into play here and, that's why I keep saying January. If the balance of the commission would like to start to attack it now, you know, come September, October, November, great. I have no, I, I'm not concerned about it. I'm not worried about it. I'm not saying it's January, nothing until January, but that's just, I know I just ramble and I apologize and I digress, but I see that's how it's all being tied together. Thoughts? Nothing. Okay. No, I think you're on point. Um, is there anything else to add with Connecticut trends and or coming in 2024 that we want to flush out right now? Just a slide that Vicky and I have to get to Vicky and on the um, the change in the regulations, which we're, we're I'm not sure if that would go here or. Slide it well, in somewhere else. Um, this slide, we also had moved to the section about continuing education. So I thought, as I understand what you're saying, that the consequences may be what's discussed on this slide if we keep it here. But this information is moved up to the continuing education portion. Is that correct, Linda? Yeah. Okay. I mean, we can, we can say it again at the end of the class. This is another fine. reminder. Yeah. Because I and think it's really important that they hear it multiple times. So your information, um, um, John, to answer your question could go here. It's not a problem. Yes. Okay. Is there anything else to be added or subtracted to the Connecticut law class? Well, Any the only other question I wanted to ask is, is this the geocompetency thing about the location? Is that going to go here also? 
not before this uh, public act, I mean, as one of the topics to put in here or no? You're taking it out or you don't want to deal with it at this time? I just didn't. I think we should add it to the competency section. Or the, well, you, at or the, the time, fair housing. When we were at the time that we were in competency, you said that I, my understanding was that it should be added to trends because I we agree. didn't want to take a decision. Okay. We didn't want to make a decision because yeah. the right. make only I, I, I believe it should be in the trend section. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. So geo competency will be going it's, in trend. Thank yeah, you. it's evolving so much right. that uh, it is truly, if not the biggest trend, it's one of them, you know. Okay, that's fair. Thank you for that clarification. Okay. All right, that's fair. That was the only other thing I okay. had. Last thing, anything from the public? Staff? Members of the commission? Okay. Uh, okay, and I'll ask one last time. Is there anything urgent that has to come before the commission? I don't have anything that can't wait to the September meeting. Okay, fair enough. Vicki, anything to be added from your point? Urgent. Well, and then, no, honestly, we only can talk about the course, so no. Okay. Because this is a special purpose meeting for the course, so yeah, that's what we, we can talk about. Yeah, but we also know we, we let it, or as we said in the last minutes of the meeting, that if there was an urgent matter, since we don't have a regular meeting. Since we don't have anything. Oh, okay, to... that's fine. But no, I don't have anything to answer the okay. question. Thank you. No question. We have nothing urgent before us. Can I get a motion? First of all, thank you for everybody's participation, your patience, your diligence, your taking time to read, think, listen. All those things are very, very important. And uh, it's been well spent for three of these sessions. And um, I think it's been well worthwhile. And we're trying to do the right thing. And I believe we have. So again, a big thank you. Enjoy the balance of what we have of the summer left and we will meet in September, but I need a, a motion and a second to close the meeting. I'll make a motion to close the meeting. Can I just, I'm sorry, can I just ask, ask one thing? I, I don't want to uh, make an issue of it, but we didn't put where we're putting Shauna stuff. I just thought about it because I see her and it just reminded me. Where are we putting our, is that gonna be a separate course or what was the decision on that? I'm sorry. Donna? I don't know, I, I sent you that information. I don't know what you guys talked about mm -hmm. as far as that went. What, yeah, what, we, what was the, in terms of where we were gonna put it or how we were gonna put it or how we were gonna put it? I don't know if you guys wanted it part of this or not. I don't know where that what got left. I did that a couple of weeks ago. What was it about? I don't I don't know if I got it. Free assessments. Oh. The assessing side. I, I sent uh, Jerry a lot of information. Somebody yeah, else. I thought, you know, Shauna, uh, we had had a discussion, I think in the first session, lengthy on that, that there was a view that it was really like a, it, it's so important to have its own two hour course. Right. Yeah, I, I heard that at one point. I just don't know what ever happened. Okay, so is that what we decided that that should be a separate course? Wait, wait a minute. I don't I remember so. talking. Can, I, I'm sorry, but I don't like Linda Subso. I don't think I. This isn't coming. To my, can, can you resend that email to us? I had sent it to Jerry and to the state the information that I had because usually yeah. I always read through the state. Jerry, can you then send it to us so that we can look at it and see how it? We'll ask for the the, the state to do that. Okay. Yes, we have sent it. All right, we'll get that to you. All right, that's fair. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank Great. you. Sorry about that. Thank you. We have a motion on the floor. Do I get a second? Second. All right. Eyes. Aye. 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 Okay. And uh, we'll look forward to that. And then I want to make sure that that is on the agenda under new business of what uh, or old business. I don't care which one it goes under uh, technically for Shauna's information to be uh, that it gets discussed in a couple of weeks at our next meeting. Okay. Okay. Thank you to make sure everyone's up to snuff. And uh, yeah, we talked about it, you know, now what, two months ago or whatever it was, but things change, things evolve and let's not, let's readdress it. So we're all up to snuff and on the same page or if there's anything to be added or subtracted, we do it then. Thank you folks. Okay, I'm going to go off and do happy appraising now. 
Yeah. Okay. Gary, I may not be at the next September meeting. We're leaving um, September 2nd for Europe and we're gone at least two two weeks. So I'm not sure that I'll be back for the okay. meeting. Okay. If you have any thoughts or comments and when that is sent out here, please uh, forward it to the state. So okay. then they're, they can let everyone know we know your opinions and thoughts, okay? Okay, thank you. All right, thank you folks. Be Enjoy, well. take care everyone, be well. And Randa, Bye. thank you for take coordinating care, us. Thank, thank you. you. Randa, you heard cats, you did well. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> take care everyone. Okay, take care. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye now.